so-called mum and dad loans to their offspring have increased by 25% in the past 12 months. That's according to a new survey released today. Parents lending money to their children for property purchases now means they rank as the country's 10th largest lender, around $20 billion worth. Well, Martin North is the principal of Digital Finance Analytics, which compiles a continuous survey on parent financing of home loans. And Martin joins us now. Martin North, thanks for your time this morning. Good morning. The good old bank of mum and dad becoming more and more the gatekeeper to property purchases. Yes, it's a very significant and I think important trend. And it's probably not fully appreciated, but essentially a lot of people are only getting into the market thanks to parents uh, providing money. And quite a lot of that money is coming out of their own properties. So there's an intergenerational transfer going on here. Uh, which, of course, means that then more first-time buyers can access the market, they can access the first owner grants. But it's uh, a rather sleeping problem, I think, from two perspectives. Firstly, um, the property prices are sliding backwards. So are um, those older people actually able to pass that money across without potentially damaging their prospects in retirement? And secondly, first-time buyers who get these, uh, these types of assistance are more likely to default later because they haven't had the discipline of saving. So it's a very significant issue, I think. Indeed, a couple of things to explore there. But first of all, how are they actually providing this money? Are we talking about uh, it being in the form of a cash deposit or is it more about equity release in the form of some kind of parental guarantee from their own property? No, it's more and more handing cash across. So the average amount paid is about $89,000 now, which is you know, a considerable amount. But if you're buying a property in Sydney, that's definitely what you need or more because of the uh, higher deposits now required by the banks because they tightened their lending criteria. So it's predominantly just handing money across. Now that money came from, may come from parental savings or it may come from taking equity out of their property. But it's dominant deposit. In other cases, they also help with paying some of the mortgage repayments or paying stamp duty. But being a guarantor is becoming less and less of a characteristic now, partly because the guarantor is a bit risky in its own right. And secondly, it doesn't actually help if you haven't got the money to start with. Indeed. And how do banks view these types of cash injections from mum and dad? Are they sceptical of lending to these borrowers, especially given, like you said, that these kind of borrowers are more likely to default? Well, it's a very interesting question. And I guess the question is, does the bank, do banks do significantly strong enough due diligence to know for sure that the money came across by way of a gift uh, or is it effectively just in the you know in the round as part of the deposit uh, that uh, a, a potential borrower um, presents um, you know it, the bank should be asking quite hard questions about show me your um, sort of behavior you know are you saving regularly you know are, are those sorts of things happening or is it a one-off gift and if it's a seagull payment um do they pick it up i'm not sure they do because i'm not sure that their internal processes are sufficiently strong uh, and i think we should uh, ask them to be on the alert for this because it does change the um assessment of the loan if you think about it um when you when you come to try and make an assessment of you know is this a good prospect or not how did they get the deposit uh, banks certainly in the spotlight the last couple of weeks, uh, not least because of the Banking Royal Commission. Like you said, there have been moves in recent years as well for APRA to tighten uh, lending for mortgage purchases. In light of all this, do you think that means parents are going to have to dig deeper or will this see a limit, uh, some kind of regulatory limit on these types of deposits? Well, we're already seeing significantly tighter lending standards now in force uh, and it's going to get worse, you know, because essentially there's much more focus now on, uh, you know, all the various uh, forms of income and where it's coming from and also all the expenditures. So I suspect that the bank of mum and dad will continue to be tapped quite regularly. Of course, it raises a whole bunch of issues in terms of if you've got two or three siblings, you know, do they all get the same? You know, it, it, there's a whole bunch of issues here that are quite concerning, but I would expect the bank of mum and dad to continue to grow. Fascinating study. Thank you very much for your time this morning, Martin. Appreciate it. Good to talk to you. Martin North is the principal of Digital Finance Analytics.